Antediluvian Revelations, a poetic retelling of the Book of Enoch, the Prophet. Part 2, Canto 1, The Parable of Wisdom. The first parable begins with Enoch declaring some simple facts of events such as they have happened. Then he asks a rhetorical question, the type that has no expected answer. When the congregation of the righteous shall be manifested and sinners are judged for their crimes, being the cause of trouble for all of the world and its destruction, when righteousness shall be manifested in the presence of the righteous themselves, who will be chosen for their good works and duly judged as worthy by the Holy Spirit as truthful believers in the eternal truth, and when the light of the righteous and the elect who dwell on the earth shall become manifested to all, where will the habitations of the sinners be? Where will those who have rejected the Holy Spirit have for their place of worship that they be absolved? It would have been better for them had they never been born. The thrust of this first parable was not unlike a blade having an edge of truth sharpening and cutting to the bone. There was still more to this parable, and Enoch continued. Also, when the secrets of the righteous shall be revealed, that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God, nor born of a virgin, then sinners will be judged, and those impious men who perpetuated those pagan lies, that blaspheme God, will be afflicted in the presence of the righteous and elect from that time, those who usurp power and possess the planet shall exigently cease to be exalted when extraterrestrial powers diminish their deleterious demands that all should obey them, and not the one true God, the Almighty One of the universe. These leaders of false religions, the heretic priests and popes, the purveyors of oppressive governmental organizations, and all of those who defiantly deny the eternal truth, will no longer have the countenances of the faithful and holy, for the light of their eyes has been seen by the Holy Spirit, and God knows among all of them who the truly righteous are. The mighty kings of this future time will be destroyed and delivered into the hands of the righteous and holy. From that time forwards, a near future time to come, none of those blasphemers shall obtain mercy, commiseration, nor forgiveness from the Holy Spirit, because their lives and all the universe will have been completed. In those days of judgment, the chosen and holy will ascend into the upper heavens, leaving the condemned seed of the fallen and the unrighteous sons of men to perish on the earth in fire. Never shall they obtain mercy, saith the Holy Spirit. In the tale of Gilgamesh, the mother of this fatherless son told that beast king of how he would meet a great one, having a power like that of a rock falling to the earth, and that it was a great power like that of the Anunnaki axe he used in battle to slay the armies of men. He was the son of a woman, this abomination Gilgamesh, who strode the earth like a colossus, being an aberration, dying in the deluge, that great catastrophic disaster caused by an ice comet, a rock falling to the earth, as predicted and that impact forcing the seas and the lands to trade places until the earth again regained its balance. Enoch, who was the son of man, the same as the chosen one, knew all of this that the Anunnaki knew, but not because of any evil spirits the same as them. Enoch received books of indignation and wrath, and he received books of hurry and agitation. These are the spells once hidden and now revealed. Only from the Holy Spirit may any who read them obtain mercy. All must praise the Lord God Almighty for their release from the hold of the judgment upon their souls, for having dared to read all of this and more, because all of this is truly a sacred book about Judgment Day. The truth of this statement is an antediluvian revelation. Snatched up into a silvery cloud with the wind raising his body above the surface of the earth and taking him to see all of the planet from an extreme distance in heaven, Enoch saw another vision of the saints in their couches, where they lived in their habitations upon their beds. There he saw them living among the angels, and their comforts with the holy ones as they prayed, entreated, supplicated, and pleaded for the sons of men, while righteousness like water flowed in front of them, and mercy like dew was scantily scattered over the earth, they shall forever be in this task without ever ceasing. In that moment Enoch saw the dwelling of the elect, the chosen and faithful believers of the eternal truth. Countless shall be the number of the holy and the elect in the presence of God for ever and ever. Enoch saw that the Holy Spirit protected their residence. All of those holy and elect sang before him, and in their voices the appearance like a blaze of fire, their mouths being full of blessings and their lips, speaking glorifications to the everlasting Holy Spirit, 
These righteous ones incessantly dwelt before the Lord. In that place where the elect praised God for ever and ever, Enoch was desirous of remaining, and his soul longed to stay among them in that habitation praising God. There was his antecedent inheritance, and it was thus that Enoch had prevailed in the presence of the Holy Spirit, praising the Lord God Almighty for his deliverance, which is the same deliverance for all who read this spell. At that time Enoch glorified and extolled the name of God, with blessing and with praise, for he has established this cure, with blessing and with praise, according to his own good pleasure. Enoch's gaze contemplated the elect as they glorified God, and it was a long time, as much as three sleepless nights, until he also blessed the Lord, saying, Blessed be he, and blessed from the beginning for ever and ever, in the beginning before the world was created, and without end is his knowledge of everything, until the end of time itself which has no end. It occurred to Enoch that this was unusual, and he suddenly asked, What is this world? What is this place of every existing generation who shall bless the Lord and not sleep in the dust, but stand before thy glory, blessing, glorifying, exalting thee, and saying, Holy, 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 is the Lord of spirits. He fills the whole world with his Holy Spirit. There Enoch did see and understand at last that all, who without sleeping, will stand before God and bless him, saying, Blessed be the Lord, and blessed be the name of God for ever and ever. Then Enoch's countenance changed, and he wept with great relief, being incapable of seeing. He was finally able to look away and close his eyes to rest. Because of all this happening being known and written, Enoch saw thousands of thousands, myriads of myriads, and even an infinite number of people standing in the Holy Spirit. On the four winds in all directions of the earth, on all four sides, Enoch saw many others likewise before the Holy Spirit, standing in the Lord's presence. Their names he knew because the angel who went forth with Enoch declared their names to him, disclosing every secret thing. Then Enoch heard the voices of those upon the four sides, magnifying the Lord of glory from all directions. The first voice blessed the Lord of spirits for ever and ever. The second voice blessed the chosen one and the chosen, who suffer on account of their faith in the eternal truth. The third voice petitioned and prayed for all of those who dwell upon the earth and praise the Holy Spirit. The fourth voice expelled the impious angels, those who offended God by going to earth, prohibiting them from entering into the presence of God, those who preferred to accuse mankind for their own sins, not being repentant for their crimes against humanity. After hearing these voices pass by him in the presence of the angel of peace who was with Enoch in the arena, Enoch inquired and beseeched this holy angel to explain all that was concealed in this display. Enoch asked that angel, who are those whom I have seen on the four sides, and whose words I have heard and written down? He replied, The first is the merciful, the patient, the holy Michael, who blesses the name of the Lord for ever and ever. His path is the way of truth, that being his virtue. The second is he who presides over every suffering and every affliction of the sons of men, the holy Raphael, who announces the Messiah's blessings and his gift to mankind. His path is the management of spirits, both good and evil. The third is he who presides over all that is powerful, over all of the heaven and the earth, the holy Gabriel, who petitions all of humanity to know the Holy Spirit. His path is to bring the glory of God in heaven to earth. The fourth is he who presides over repentance and the hope for the inheritance of eternal life, the holy Fanuel, who expels the fallen and their liars on the day of judgment. His path is the glory of God that Gabriel will bring to earth. He is the one and only Christ, the true Messiah, chosen by God, the Father, who created all life in the universe for his loving personal sacrifice that all of mankind might repent to receive the gift of everlasting life as their inheritance. These were the four archangels of the Most High God, and their voices which Enoch heard in that stadium, and their paths are now marked for all to finally know. For many centuries, the pagans, on the whole in general, and those who protested pointlessly tried to keep it a secret, while knowing that the eternal truth will be their condemnation, because they are guilty of blasphemy, idolatry, and deception. Upon knowing all of this, Enoch beheld the secrets of the heavens and of paradise according to its divisions and of humanity. As these become weighed in scales to the perfection of veracity, Enoch looked beyond the habitations of the elect and the holy, seeing past these joyous places where endless blessings to God, 
exalted the Almighty endlessly for all the days of their existence, he looked at the other place where he beheld the sinners, those who denied the Holy Spirit, the eternal truth, the Lord of glory, and he saw who was expelling them from thence, dragging them away from the spots where they stood to their punishments which they deserved for their blasphemies against the truth of the Lord of Spirits and his chosen one. In that place Enoch also saw the secrets of lightning and thunder, and the secrets of the winds, how they are distributed as they blow over the earth, the secrets of the winds, the dew, and of the clouds. He saw the place from which those winds issued forth, and became saturated with the dust of the earth as they blew. Separated from the winds being that which separated them, Enoch saw the wooden receptacles of hail and snow. He saw the receptacles of the clouds and the cloud itself, which had been over all of the earth before its creation. Enoch beheld the receptacles of the moon, which issued the moon whence it came, whither it proceeded, its glorious return, and how one view of it in the sky became more splendid than another in its pattern. He made notes of their rich progress, their unchangeability, their disunited and undiminished progression, and their observance of a mutual fidelity by a stable oath. How these phases of the moon proceeded forth before the sun and their adherence to their designated paths in obedience to the command of the Lord of Spirits, powerful and potent is his name for ever and ever. After he had perceived the paths concealing and manifesting, as well as the progress of the moon's path night and day, these effects being the sleeplessness, nightmares, and visions of those who refuse and will look from one to another, until kneeling before the Lord of Spirits magnifying and praising, without cessation, since praise to him will be their peace. For splendid is the sun when there is a frequent conversion, with blessings from the effects of this malediction by denial. The course of the moon's path to the righteous is light, but to sinners it is darkness. In the name of the Holy Spirit, who created a division between light and darkness, and strengthened the spirits of men, strengthened the spirits of the righteous in the name of his own righteousness, fear not, nor delay in the act of salvation in this moment. The angel who guards this path does not prevent, nor is he endowed with the power of providence, for the judge beholds all who trespass. God will judge them all in his own presence, and only the penitent will pass. Wisdom found not a place on earth where she could inhabit. Her dwelling, therefore, is in heaven. Wisdom went forth to dwell among the sons of men, but she obtained no welcome habitation with them. Wisdom returned to her place, and seated herself in the midst of the angels. But iniquity went forth after her return to heaven, and it unwillingly found habitation there, residing around her as rain in the desert, and as a dew in a thirsty land. Wisdom lived in heaven, because there was no place on earth for her, but wisdom tried to live on earth among men. Wisdom ended up homeless, because none would have her, and wisdom returned to be with the angels. Iniquity resulted from the presence of wisdom among the angels, and wisdom left to simply be rain in the desert, becoming lost to anyone ever again. Everyone makes mistakes from time to time, but it takes wisdom to prevail. At last Enoch beheld another splendor, and the stars of heaven in their multitude. He also saw, respecting this splendor, that it rises out of the stars becoming splendor, being incapable of ever forsaking them. The angel of peace called out the names of these splendid stars, respectively, as they responded upon hearing their names said, In a righteous balance, that being a scale of truth, Enoch saw that the angel weighed them out with their light, the amplitudes of their places, the day of their appearance, and their conversion, so that the splendor produced splendor. Their conversion was the enumeration of the angels, and the faithful who followed their different paths. Then Enoch inquired of the angel of peace who was with him, and explained to him all these secret things, and precisely what the names are of these multitudes. He answered, A similitude of those has the Lord of Spirits shown thee. They are the names of the righteous who dwell upon the earth, and who believe in the Holy Spirit and the eternal truth. This concludes this episode of Antediluvian Revelations, a poetic retelling of the Book of Enoch. Be sure to subscribe or follow for notifications of new releases. Thank you for listening. I am Michael.